feel like normally when they say that, especially with the speed that he was ruled out of the game, I was kind mm -hmm. of fearful of the worst. And then unfortunately it was confirmed today that it was an ACL. I feel horrible for Hafunga. I think he was going to be up for like a contract extension next year. And now he's going to be kind of recovering for that for, from that ACL. He's been just honestly just seems like a really stand up great guy and then has also been such a playmaker always seems to have such a knack for the ball intercept you know right now the 49ers are I think leading the league in interceptions and he's a huge part of that he always has his eye on the ball very mm -hmm. physical um pretty good tackler all the all the things so definitely the you know my prayers are out for Hafunga and I, I think he'll be back and and you know better than ever next year but definitely it's it's sad to see stuff like that and it's especially sad like Football is so interesting and sports in general are so interesting because when I saw the play, I kind of laughed. Like, you don't know. Like, I felt like they did. I don't know. Maybe it's just where where I was watching it or the broadcast I was watching. But I felt like they did a bad job explaining what happened. Like, I saw it and it yeah. looked like he, like, slipped. And I it didn't, like, he wasn't, like, laying on the field or they didn't show him laying on the field on my screen. So I kind of was like. Like, oh, that's, you know, he got juked out. Like, I kind of was like, oh, that's funny. Like, you know, it sucks for him. That's probably embarrassing. That sucks. And then they didn't show anything else about him being on the field or him getting carted off. And I'm watching the game. And then I see on Twitter, like, oh, Hafunga's out with an injury. Hafunga's out or Hafunga's being taken on a cart with, that, with an injury, blah, blah, blah. And then I felt like as soon as I read that, it was like two minutes later that they were like, he's ruled out for the whole game. And that's when I was like, oh, shoot, that's. And then you think about it being non-contact. So. First of all, yeah. any any thoughts on Hafunga? And then we'll talk about Jair Brown, who came in uh, as a replacement for Hafunga. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, that's a tough blow. Not just for Hufunga, but, you know, for the team, for the defense. He was well on pace, I think, to have his best season statistically for the 49ers. And now, you know, the 49ers are heading into the brunt of their schedule here coming up. and it's going to be tough without someone like Hufunga and those are pretty big shoes to fill. And I think one of the reasons why is because Hufunga had such a specific role in this defense that I don't think anyone else can really like replicate. And I don't think the 49ers are going to force anyone to, you know, fit into that role just because it was very much tailored to Hufunga's skill set, right? Like he was very much always, around in and around the box you know um and that's where he operated best always around the ball you know that's how he ended up with so many interceptions um and so it you know that's what i think this defense is gonna miss but it's it's always like next man up and the nfl it's it's really unfortunate um but you know the season goes on right and so next man up is going to be jair brown and, you know, I have to feel like there's there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about Brown. For one, like, he had that one play, and I think is where they got that that touchdown, uh, where he kind of was caught a little flat-footed there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're automatically thinking, oh, God, like, this, this is, is what we're going to have to deal with. Playing. A, a, yeah. a rookie, like, dealing with, you know, rookie mistakes and man, this is going to be tough for the defense kind of thing. But, you know, Jair Brown ended that game in a very strong way, four tackles, three pass breakups an interception in less than two court. Like that's crazy. So, I mean, yeah. he, and after the game, like I instantly became a huge fan of him. I, I was already like excited for him, you know, when the 49ers drafted him, uh, but just hearing what he had to say about like, he'd been preparing for a moment like this all season pretty much. And, you know, it's not the situation in which you'd like to have your opportunity, right? Like someone going down with injury, but again, it's the nature of the NFL. And as someone who's second string and, you know, waiting in the wings, like you, you kind of just have to be ready for your moment. However that comes about. So it feels like uh, Brown is ready, you know, to take on that role. And, he has the benefit of this defense and a ton of veterans around him to help support him. He's going to be playing next to Tashawn Gibson. There might not be anyone else as far as like veteran presence for him to learn from than a guy like Gibson. Right. So 
um, you know, very similar to how uh, Hufunga came into the league and, and he, you know, kind of carved out a role for himself uh, in his rookie season, you know, now Brown has that opportunity. So uh, he, he has a knack for a ball for the ball too. Right. Like he, I think in college, the last two years at Penn state, he had the most interceptions of any player. Uh, so, you know, I, I think the 49ers are going to maybe get a boost in coverage. Again, they might miss having another guy in the box like who Funga was. But, you know, I, I think Brown could bring a, a different element to this defense as well. I I definitely agree. And I think it's I think it's kind of cool. Like it, the guys that they had as their starters and their backups are all guys that have knacks, knacks for the football and for catching the football. Um, so I don't think that they're going to be missing anything with that, but yeah, I just taking it, taking it through like my experience of, of the Brown coming in situation, I felt like immediately when he was kind of, um, caught on that play and, and, and gave up an, a, a immediate touchdown because they, they went after him right away. I was like, this yeah. is why the 49ers aren't playing him. You know what I mean? It's kind of just this sigh and this like, okay, I really hope Hufunga's okay. Like this is. And obviously, I also still hope Hufunga's okay. But it's kind of like, this is why, you know, because he's he's their first draft pick of this year, right? Like, they traded up to get him. So you're kind of like, okay, like, he wasn't playing for a reason. This kind of sucks. And for him, for his confidence, because, like, I think it was Jalen Ramsey. He was doing a podcast last year. And he was talking about, like, what, you know, makes him stand out. And obviously, physical talent and elements are on there. But what he talked about and he said this was this is true for any player and he said specifically in the secondary is you have to be confident you have to believe you're going to win against yeah. your guy you have to believe you're going to come down with the ball you have to like and and i think eric crocker has kind of touched on this too and every position in football you need to be confident but there's something it's almost cockiness that you need in that secondary position where you need to be like overwhelmingly sure that that ball is yours and that you are going to keep up with this guy who is objectively faster and probably stronger and faster than you are but whatever it is about you and your skill is going to get you there and get you to be able to stop the play and i felt like as a rookie coming out giving up a play immediately you're kind of like oh what is this going to do to him because like i'm focused on once again, not only this Buccaneers game, because I'm like, okay, you're, we're probably going to win this game. You can probably squeak out no matter what. But we're going in, like you said, to the roughest stretch. What does this do if if the team has to rely on this guy? And so you kind of see that, and you're like, no. And then six minutes left in the game, or a little over six minutes left in the game, the kind of offense is kind of slowing down. The defense is kind of letting the Buccaneers hang around. And Jair Brown breaks up a pass, gives the offense, you know, stops the Buccaneer, Buccaneers from getting within one score. So he takes points off the yeah. field for the Buccaneers. He gives the 49ers an offense an opportunity to go put more points on the board. 49ers offense, don't do anything with that, with that one. Buccaneers go back on the field. And then in the end zone with, I think, three minutes left, Jair Brown catches a freaking interception. And I don't know, I just felt so happy for him because I'm like, this is going to influence – how his confidence and 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 maybe he would have been confident no matter what but you have to imagine that no matter how much mental toughness you have you feel better being like i just killed that game versus like oh i just really struggled and i have to come out you know way better next game and so i just i felt so happy for him the player and for the 49ers i i bet that that made the coaches proud because you're talking about him saying hey i'm prepared but you can say it. everyone says like I'm making sure I'm prepared for my opportunity. He went out there with his actions and showed I'm prepared for my opportunity. And so that's going to give Steve Wilkes confidence when calling plays around him. That's going to give Kyle Shanahan, you know, confidence when it comes to keeping him out there and, and John Lynch feeling like he made a, made the correct choice. So I just felt like the way that that, I felt like it was like a story, you know, you, you kind of, yeah, you get your was. like, you get your lull and then there's this like triumphant kind of ending just for him as an individual player, I thought that that was, it was really cool as a fan to to see, especially as a fan who was excited. You know, there was so much hype about him in the draft. Um, I, I I was like, you know, okay, you know, this sucks about Havanga. It really it really does. But maybe maybe the 49ers got something here, and maybe this isn't you know 
going to be a huge area of of weakness moving forward. And obviously, we don't know. It's been one game. You know, he has to keep it up. But I yeah. felt like it was at the very least promising. You know, so you're not like, okay, we gotta we gotta win, but also like we're screwed going forward. It kind of felt like we gotta win and. We might have something here, you know. We still gotta, we still gotta figure it out. But like, damn, he looked really good right there. So that's yeah. how I left. You know yes, that he did. Yeah, that's no, it was that. it was the storybook ending. Yeah, like you said, I I, I tweeted that too. A storybook ending for uh for Brown and maybe and I stole for... this review. I feel like sometimes I just tweet. <laughs> no, like, I mean, that sounds like a great idea just, for Brown. I think it was just the natural feeling of like him going out there and how it started and versus how it ended, right? And and someone corrected me in the replies and they were like beginning because this is i mean that was literally oh, like his first that. game like it's just the beginning who oh, chills you know i got i bring them in bars today we got past <laughs> we got people on twitter right. just setting this up i like that I yeah like that. so no i mean that that fourth down play was crazy because you remember isaiah oliver was even in there so like we were double freaking out about uh the defense on that play i thought it was smart um, too uh steve wilkes blitzing oliver i liked how Ooh, he was like you was, are not you that are was not gonna... ballsy i know that I know. was ballsy but it, but it, it, it worked it out helped. didn't that like, yeah it worked out the throw, right that was, <laughs> yeah that was yeah it did. yeah okay, it, well, it worked out so we're we're gonna wrap it up